I'm going to give a talk, and I'm not going to go through any of these um, text slides very much, but I'm going to show a lot of kind of pictures. Where and when do we use image guidance? That's really what this is about. Okay, do I use them for laminectomies and things like that? And the answer, the answer is no. And so, you know, what cases do you do? It's a learning curve. Okay, I think that if you're a beginner at this, you do some small degenerative cases. Trauma cases are actually pretty good. I think the first time I ever put pedicle screws in a patient way back when is in a trauma patient. I mean, it's like start with things that are actually going to make sense to you that you can control, you can have a handle on before you go to more high performance uh, concepts and technology. Um, can and should we navigate everything? I think potentially we will. Potentially we will. There's, there's going to be the technology that we're going to be able to do laminectomies and microdiscectomies with ways that we haven't even dreamed up yet. Okay, it, it's beyond us and probably beyond, maybe beyond our lifetime, some of these things. Uh, learn the basics of IGS and then advance in complexity. Okay, as I said, trauma cases, uh, do some degen cases. You know, the larger lumbar and thoracic anatomy is easier, easier to learn in this learning curve concept and advance to more complex procedures. And so a lot of it is just understanding the anatomy of the spine. I go back to the basics of, of just anatomy is that where and when do we need to place hardware in the spine? And this isn't just about hardware either. I use it in different places, but it's really just understanding the anatomy. It's all about anatomy. And, and one of those jokes, it's like, how do you do surgery? It's anatomy and hemostasis. You know, that's, those are the two basics. Okay, so here, here's a great case. I mean, here's, an, here's a fracture case that some people would put in a brace, but if this thing, if you deem it needs to be operated on, neurologically normal patient, and you're gonna put screws in, I mean, these are perfect cases. Do this as a percutaneous MIS image guided case. You know, there you go. Great case, great case. You know, when do we need to have navigation? Okay, when you don't have identifiable anatomy, when you have small pedicles, when you have um, distorted uh, uh, curvature, you've got poor bone quality. Okay, who can put pedicle screws into this? You gotta do a revision on that? Okay, I know Terry Kim can. Okay, he puts pedicle screws in things that I can't believe. And he would look at this and say, that's not a problem, Dr. J. So, here are some other cases. I mean, complex revision cases. Here's a PJK case where, you know, the, the screws migrated out. You have a kyphosis over the top of a, a previous long fusion. I mean, this was a pretty simple case. I mean, it turns into a simple case, but these are the kind of places that, okay, you're going to use custom trajectories, okay, where we just see in the lower right-hand corner where you have some creative ways to fix this spinal problem. Um, what are some of the advanced procedures uh, that we perform, I mean, pelvic fixation. I mean, that's a key part of any big spinal reconstruction we do these days with, with long fusions. You have to have pelvic fixation. We use image guidance for that. We find it a lot easier. We can still put screws in. In fact, I did one the other day. I amazed myself that it actually looked pretty good that we didn't use image guidance. But, you know, that, that just comes down to experience. If you don't have the experience, you need the technology to really do these things reliably. And we already heard, you know, back to lecture number one this morning about, about costs. I mean, it comes down to cost effectiveness. Is it how many times do you want to take patients back to the operating room? Um, cranial cervical junction, cranial vertebral junction. I mean, all these places are very high risk cases. So this is just one of those cases that here, here's a guy with a PJK problem that comes out of my clinic in Montana, believe it or not. Um, this is where the pelvic fixation is really essential. These are just some of the places that you get to, you, you have to do this, in my view, to do it reliably. Um, cervical spine, I consider it a high performance place. And a lot of it comes down to how do you do the registration of this and where do you put the reference frame? You can use a clamp on patients, but we use more and more. In fact, we're, we're getting away from things like pelvic pins is that we'll, we will use external um, uh, reference frames like this in the cervical and cervical thoracic spine, even though it's a long way off, if you figure the distance from where these things are um, to where we're navigating at the cervical thoracic junction, the accuracy is incredible. Um, just another kind of ideas of how we set things up in the operating room. Um, and we're, a we're able to attach reference frames to the Mayfield with the accuracy that we didn't think we would have before. Um, anterior cervical. Well, it gets even less, but we use it there. So people ask me, say, do you use this for an ACD? No. Okay. 
Would I use it for some complex cervical case that we need to go from the front side? You bet we do. And we'll set it up just like this, and we'll put a Mayfield on the patient, even though we don't even necessarily hook the Mayfield up to the table. Okay, as long as you have it, if you're doing craniovertebral junction, okay, and I'll show you a couple of cases that apply to this. Um, you know, these are posterior cervical. This is a C12 case. You can even navigate to where you're going to do the fusion in the facet joint. So here's a case, anterior cervical case. Okay, yeah, it happens to be through the mouth though. Okay, so this is a patient that needs a transoral operation just to know where you are. Okay, we aren't putting screws in this patient, not in the front side anyway. But just to be able to know where we are when we're doing this operation, here I am at the top pointing it, and I just say, I need a pointer, I need a pointer. We navigate the drill, we navigate everything that we think we, we might need for these operations, but we use the drill and we'll use a lot of instruments. But oftentimes I will just say, show me where we are. And here's the, the bottom of a decompression of a transoral case. Um, here's a complex congenital cervical deformity case. Um, it's a multiple clipal files and a patient with, a, with an anterolisthesis of the uh, occipital cervical junction. This is a decompression. We just use it for the decompression part. But then we put a lot of hardware into this patient also. I can't believe we can put screws like this into patients. You know, it just amazes me. But this is all from, from just the registration that we use in the cervical spine. Other places, you know, these are just high performance cases. Here's a patient that has a, a thoracolumbar junction problem. Uh, did the case in a simultaneous through the chest and in the back. Put pedicle screws, did the decompression on the front side, back side. These are just some of the places that navigate everything. Yes, okay. Do, um, I run two operating rooms. We're doing these kind of cases in one room, and the next room I call the lump and bump room, the laminectomies, the discectomies, I mean the, the basic cases. We don't do image guidance for those. But if you think about it, what about a far lateral disc? Okay, could you imagine using it for a far lateral disc? I could. We did a bunch of them recently. It's like we talked about it. We said, gee, maybe we should use the image guidance. We haven't done it yet, but you know, it's th this is my talk. I get to say, where do we do it? We don't need it for absolutely everything, but there are certain decompression cases that I just want to you know, if, see where we're operating and where we're pointing. Here's a patient with a recurrent tumor. I mean, I had to figure out where is this tumor so I could go in and just take, this was a recurrent chordoma that the patient was decompressed about every two years. <clears throat> How about a thoracic disc? Okay, we do these with an endoscope. I do endoscopic thoracic discs, and this is a midline disc. It's a, it's a big one and a bad problem. So we put a reference frame on the back of the patient, and then we, um, we do a spin with a patient on a Jackson table. Um, definitely do use image guidance for this. In fact, we published a paper about it. Um, tumors in the chest that we do with an endoscope. Here's a tumor that's a uh, um, big nerve sheath tumor that's in the chest. We'll take these out as well. Um, what about the sacrum? Okay, sacrum is kind of like the skull. It's a big bony box of various sorts that if you have to do something in the sacrum and you have a biopsy of something, that's actually one of the first cases I ever used image guidance for a long time ago. It was some little tiny biopsy that nobody could find it. The, the radiology uh, guys, the interventional guys couldn't do it. So here's a, uh, a chordoma, and as, uh, as Charles said, is that your osteotomies, you know exactly where to put these things. You're not just going in there and guessing. These are the kind of cases that you, know, you, you have to have image guidance for. Um, here's a patient that had a chronic wound infection from a residual epidermoid tumor. Danielle, you know this patient. And actually, we, we had this wound problem plastic surgeons and this guy was revised I think a dozen times and then he was sent to me and I said well how do we find this little residual amount of tumor inside of this guy which was a nidus of his infection so I said okay we're going to CT it we're going to do an MR we're going to merge them we're going to take the guy to the operating room and we're going to use the image guidance to wash out a wound infection okay so navigate everything yes there, there are some reasons that we navigate everything but getting back to you know the list here Okay, I put the little asterisks, you know, these are non-standard locations that, you know, we, we may or may not use image guidance. The places that uh, uh, you don't need it, I'm doing a laminectomy, of course, then we talked and we heard about appropriate level. I mean, how are we going to localize? Is it easier? If we had a simpler technology that would tell us where to go and we could navigate some of those things, it would really be great. I'm just talking about concepts here. So... Do we navigate everything? 
No, we use it for the places that we just need to see better than we are now. That's really the bottom line. Thank you very much.